Hey art nerds! Today I wanted to share a tutorial for painting your own edigame postcards. This is a really fun, fairly simple watercolor activity. So this is the reference image that I'm using. They are crocuses. It's a photo I took in Nashville and I thought they were just beautiful. I really wanted to try and capture that. So I do have some more information if you guys are interested in learning about edigami in the description down below. But basically it's simple handmade watercolor postcards designed to be sent to people. So the materials I'm using today are Kuritake edigami postcards. You don't have to use that. Um, these particular postcards, they are watercolor paper, but it's not like Western watercolor paper. It's a Gensai watercolor paper. So it handles a little bit differently than Western watercolor paper, but you can absolutely use whatever watercolor paper you can get your hands on for this. I also have a pencil for sketching. The Moz Art Como Rebi set. And originally Gensai style watercolor, like the Kuratake Gensai Saitambi set, those were created for people who wanted to make edigami postcards. So you could use that set, you could use the Akashia set, you could use the Moz Art set. I'm also going to be using Sumi brushes, and these are just fairly inexpensive Sumi brushes that I picked up at Plaza. Most of them are goat hair, but I do have a couple of weasel hair ones in there as well. You don't have to use watercolor brushes, you can use whatever watercolor brushes you have handy, but Sumi brushes are pretty inexpensive, and you may find that you really like them and want to add them to your regular watercolor rotation. I'm also going to be using Pintel Black Pigment Brushes. I'm going to have links down in the description below for everything you need if you want to be precise and order exactly what you need. I've got you. But if you already have watercolor materials, you probably have everything you need to get started. So I'm going to begin by securing my edigami paper to just any kind of structural support. So what I have here is the back of a watercolor pad. It's a Canton XL pad if you guys are curious. And I'm just going to use a little bit of washi tape to kind of adhere it down so it doesn't kip up and buckle all over the place. You don't have to do this step. I just tend to work with a lot of water, so it's a useful step for me. One thing I want to point out right now is I would highly recommend you apply the tape to the interior of your arm first before you stick it just to remove a little bit of the tack. So we're going to start by sketching our crocuses. I have my reference image up on my computer just off shot. And when I'm drawing flowers, I always start with kind of an abstraction of their shape. So in this instance with the crocuses, I'm starting with a flower. Then I roughly sketch in five petals working closely from the reference. And I got to tell you guys, the more you guys practice drawing things like flowers, the better you're going to get and the better you're going to be able to do it from imagination. So practice, practice, practice will make you perfect, perfect, perfect perfect. Well, maybe not perfect, but because there's beauty in imperfection, we don't want perfection. We just want good enough. We want to capture the spirit. So here is my completed sketch. I apologize. It is a little bit difficult to see. I sketched very lightly with a very hard lead because I'm just using this as a guideline. I'm going to ink on top of the finished piece at the end once all the watercolor has had a chance to dry. So what's interesting is different types of edigami papers have different types of effects. But generally, edigami paper, particularly when I'm buying edigami paper, has a very lovely blend technique. And you're going to be painting a lot more thickly than you would if you were using Western watercolors, which is where maybe using Gensai style watercolors might come in. A set or I do think like praying watercolors would probably work really well for this technique. I also think Yarka, the student grade watercolors would work really well for this technique. Maybe even the Crayola super saturated colors, any kind of watercolor that's really designed for more thick application or a thicker application. Maybe even Chinese watercolors would work really well for this. So I'm using a hake brush and I'm going to apply my background and this is where I want to point out where I made my first mistake. I was trying to work too thin and I found that this particular paper starts to sort of not buckle, well it does buckle a little bit, but more it starts to lift up and pill. So you want to avoid overworking it and oversaturating. So when you're painting your watercolor, think fresh, think lively, think very light applications. 
Now there are many different types of edigame paper and in the near future I'm gonna have some more tutorials like this one where I'm trying out different brands since I'm trying to find one that I like. This one is made by Kuratake and I picked it up when I was in Japan a couple years ago. So at this point unfortunately my camera died on me but all I really did was I did a lot of wet into wet applications using lighter greens and then progressively adding darker blues to sort of build up some of those floral shadows. I let it dry for a while. Now I'm coming back in while it's still wet. I told you guys earlier, I kind of oversaturated this piece, so you want to avoid doing that. Edigame paper is not designed to take as much water as Western style watercolor paper. So you're going to have to kind of change your mindset. And it's been a while since I had time to work on edigame postcards. So I had to get myself back into that mindset. So what I'm trying to do is build up this interplay of really cool dark blues as well as brighter, fresher greens. And I am actually leaving a halo around the crocuses that I'm painting. You guys can see in this photo where I had issues with the paper itself pilling. That was on me. That's not a flaw in the paper. So now that my background has had a chance to dry, it's not completely dry, but it's much more dry. I'm going in and adding just a few more final tighter details. You can work as tight or as loose as you want. Again, just keep freshness in mind and liveliness in mind. These are supposed to be spontaneous. So that's one of the things that makes this a really fun watercolor project. Great for anybody who's interested in trying out watercolor. They don't have to be good. They don't have to be particularly realistic. They don't have to be particularly well rendered. The point is seasonal, something you did yourself, something that comes from the heart that you can send to someone else. And I would vastly prefer to receive a beautiful hand-painted postcard from someone than necessarily a Hallmark card. And I know not everyone, I know the sentiment is what counts. It's the thought that counts. But, you know, even a bad, badly painted edigame postcard is something that somebody spent time making. I mean, think about how touched you are when maybe a niece and nephew, your child, your grandchild gives you a piece of art that they made. It doesn't matter if it's stick figures and if the sun has a smiley face on it. And is that a lion or is it a jelly bean? I can't quite tell. You love it anyway. What really matters is not perfection, but the fact that someone took the time to make it. And that's what I really want to encourage you guys to do and why I want to encourage you guys to give this a try because we're not aiming for the most beautiful thing. We're aiming for something that we make ourselves that we can send to somebody else. And it's such a beautiful way to celebrate the season, to celebrate what makes the particular season so, so good. In Nashville, it's just starting to turn into spring. So you're starting to get those early spring blossoms and the grass is finally starting to come back. And these edigame postcards are a great way to kind of celebrate the changing of the season. So you guys can see, since I let my paper dry out a little bit more, I can add tighter details. I'm not really trying to re render it super realistically. I'm really just trying to capture the feeling and I'm trying to break up the space of the postcard. So another thing about edigame and even gensai style watercolor is you're really not supposed to do a whole lot of color mixing. That's why like the gensai tombi set or the mozart set come with so many colors. It's very immediate. So this is a, 
this is also a great project for people who are maybe not super confident about their color mixing. So I'm going into the centers of the flowers. I know it's a little difficult to see. I apologize about that. And I added some yellow. And then while that was still wet, I painted in some orange for the stamens. And then leaving a halo around that and working around it, I'm using some warm red violets and some warm violets to build up the colors of the crocuses. And I'm using the larger sumi brush. Um, so with edigame, mark making is also something that's important. So kind of like sumie painting or Chinese watercolor, the marks you make do affect the in piece and they are pretty important. So this can also be a really great exercise for people who are looking to improve their mark making with their watercolor. When I started studying Chinese watercolor and practicing edigame, I found that the attention I put into my mark making really benefited my western style watercolor as well and i'm working into these wet into wet because we really want those soft blends and as you guys work with traditional edigame paper if you're able to get a hold of it you're going to hopefully appreciate the blendiness of this paper yes western cotton rag watercolor paper does offer some blendability but the point of edigame watercolor paper is that blendiness You guys might also have noticed that I'm leaving a lot of halo around our crocus bulbs or our crocus blooms. So for the stems, I added just a little bit of purple and then blend that out with clean water. Leaving a halo with edigame is perfectly fine. It's really meant to be painted in one sitting. Since I'm painting these in Louisiana, um, <laughs> it's a little bit more humid than it might be in Nashville. So there are longer drying times for me. So doing it in just one sitting is not really that feasible, but I also added a lot of extra water to the paper, more so than really necessary. Something else that's really lovely is as you continue to paint, as you continue to mix your paints really thickly, and you are gonna be working very thickly with these, um, gouache might also play really nicely on edigame paper because it's also designed for a really thick application. But, um, you guys will notice that I'm really able to build up color, vibrancy, and intensity, but that does require working thickly with the color. So I have that side palette, the little plastic palette off to the left. That's not really, I'm not mixing my colors with water. I have that over there just to ensure that I get a fairly even mix of the color as well as the water in the brush itself on the brush. So we don't necessarily get an application of like color and then just water unexpectedly. So now that I have kind of filled everything in, everything's been blocked in, I'm using a cool warm blue, I'm sorry, a cool, <laughs> contradicting myself, a cool dark blue to block things in a bit more and do a little bit of negative painting. And that's creating a little bit more depth and contrast. And then I go back over it with a lighter yellow just to kind of reestablish the stamens. Once that kind of dried, I kind of reevaluated the piece and I decided I wanted more warm pink colors involved. <laughs> so using the reference image as my guide, but not feeling married to it. I'm not obligated to do everything in the reference. See, that's another really lovely thing about edigame is that there is the beauty in you making decisions for yourself, not just following the reference. But I added just a little bit more warm reds and pink tones to our crocuses. So while painting this, since I'm working with such thick amounts of watercolor, such heavy applications of watercolor, I do change my water cup out 
pretty frequently. I would say I changed the water in the cup about five times since I started painting this. And I'm not complaining. It's not a complaint. It's just a note for you guys because you want, if you're going to use your water to blend out your colors, you want it to be clean water. You don't want it to be muddy water. You don't want to blend out with a color that looks like brown. I also switched my brush to one of the smaller Sumi brushes just so that I could add tighter details and get a little bit more of a nuanced application. So at this point, I definitely could have stopped. It really looks beautiful right now. But I was enjoying painting this and enjoying looking at the beautiful crocuses. By the time I get back to Nashville, they'll be gone. They only bloom for such a short period of time. But this is a wonderful way to be able to spend maybe a little bit more time with a beautiful subject, with a beautiful jug or a beautiful pumpkin or a beautiful flower. It doesn't really matter what you're painting. But one of the nice things about painting things is that you're spending time appreciating the object looking maybe at all the cracks or where the color shifts and appreciating the beauty in that gradation. So I allowed it to dry a bit, decided I wanted to add even more of that warm red, sort of red violet color, and also kind of close the halo just a little bit so it's not quite so obvious. And one of the beautiful things about painting from reference is you can just kind of get into this groove where you're just appreciating the subject matter and appreciating how the paints are handling and appreciating how they're going down on the paper without forever trying to problem solve the next step. I mean, I do a lot of original watercolor illustrations as well, which you guys can check out on Instagram at instagram.com slash natosoup. Actually, I would love it if you guys would check them out. But sometimes it's just really nice to spend time working quietly from reference. It almost becomes like quiet meditation. It's a good chance to kind of just take a breather, step away from the world, and get involved in something that isn't going to necessarily stress you out. And to get involved in something that doesn't have to be perfect. And I think that's an area a lot of artists are struggling with. Is they feel like everything they do has to be 100% perfect. It doesn't. You can, you can paint bad things, you can draw bad things, you can make mistakes. Having the room to do that is really important because it's when you make those mistakes that you have the chance to problem solve and grow. So working from reference frees me up to make more mistakes because I'm not just trying to make my head babies, <laughs> my original characters, make my stories really resonate with other people. I can just paint some pretty flowers. So I wanted to close some of the halo around the crocuses themselves. So I'm going back in with a much smaller brush. This is a Boku and Undo Menso brush, I believe. And it's a weasel hair brush. So it's a very soft brush compared to the goat hair brushes, the white fiber brushes I was using. And I'm just kind of adding some more grass just to kind of close in that gap, close in that space. So it's not like massive white halo. Like I said earlier, leaving a halo in your edigami papers, that's fine because it's such a blendy paper and you're painting things so quickly. You do want to leave a little bit of halo for colors that you don't want to blend immediately. Um, but I didn't want the halo as large as it was, so I'm filling it in a little bit now. And I'm going in greens and blues just to paint the grass.
So if you feel it's finished at this stage, you are totally free to call it done. But some of the Edagame postcards that I love the most have this really thick, expressive black line art around the illustration. And when I was painting this, I painted it knowing that I would come back later and ink on top of it. So I'm using the Pentel pigment brush pen and that's after this has had a chance to dry that way I don't get any spidering or any bleeding and I'm using the extra fine version of it although a little bit later on I'll use the medium version as well just to kind of fill in some larger areas So now I switched over to the larger brush pen and that's just because it covers more area a little bit more quickly and I'm just blocking in some spot blacks in the grass just to further that contrast a little bit. I think that just about does it. I think we are finished with this Edagame postcard. I want to thank you guys so much for painting with me and hanging out with me today. I hope you guys found this inspiring and restful. And I would love to see your Edagame postcards as well. If you end up painting one or something inspired by this, please link it in the comments below. I'd love to check it out. Have a wonderful day, guys. Bye!